So today, guys, is all about catching mangrove jacks. And I'm gonna show you what to look for on your sounder, show you what good spots look like, show you how to work the lures, the ones that I like using. But at the moment, on our river, here this is the Tweed River, and a lot of the rivers on the east coast of Australia, you tend to find the bite time for these jacks is right on the bottom of the tide. So the, the last hour of the run out, and maybe the first half hour to an hour on the run in, where there's a little bit less run in the water. We're about halfway through the tide. So while I wait for that, I'm not gonna go to the spots that um, I know will hold jacks, because I don't wanna waste my time, because I don't think they'll eat. Uh, as this tide flows out, it's a great time to maybe get a feed of flathead. So I thought, well, I'll flick, uh, I'm gonna have a go with this thing. Bone Focus, they've just come out with new colors, the white one. Mate, flatty love white lures. And I'm just gonna cast a couple of flats and see if we can find a flathead or two before we get stuck in the jacks. Flat it aren't doing much. I think we might start heading up the creek towards where the jacks are holding. Last cast. Didn't I say that three casts ago? It just looks so good here. Never fished this spot. Oh, we only just got out, mate. We're waiting for this tide to turn. We got a heap of rain last night, so the water's filthy. So um, we're just waiting for this tide to change and hopefully we can find some mangrove jacks. So a lot of the estuaries on the east coast of Australia, sort of north of maybe Coffs, hold mangrove jacks. Uh, some south of, of Coffs, but mainly north of Coffs. And they've all got man-made rock walls. And the Tweed River is no different. And they fish really well. I love fishing the rock walls. If you can get, if you can get the jack out of the wall, you, you've got a good chance of catching him. And then particularly if you find a rock wall that's got overhanging trees as well. That is dynamite. Because I normally bring half a dozen or so rods with me, all rigged up, different lures, ready to go. One busts off, I can just pick up another one and keep going. I just want to quickly run through the gear that you'll need to catch yourself that ever elusive red dog. Um, let's start off uh, over here. Really, I only have a couple of tackle boxes that I bring out on the boat and they're pre-organized and I set them aside. So whenever I go jack fishing, I just pick up these boxes and I'm good to go. All right, firstly, I've got a small tackle box here. I've actually got a stack of brim lures in there. Don't look at those. Just in case we can't catch a jack, we go catch a brim. Uh, just jig heads. And in terms of soft plastics, I'm using the McCarthy's as a paddle tail. It's a four inch. I love that four inch paddle tail. I think four inch baits or 100 mil, 120 mil is the perfect size for mangrove jacks. Other soft plastics, I love throwing frogs at mangrove jacks. So again, these are McCarthy frogs and this one's slightly weighted. You can see the weedless hooks I've got in there. That one's slightly weighted. And this one here, it's just got a very small weight in the top of the head. So uh, just for a little bit of ease of casting, I like throwing this, the heavier one, and also helps the frog sit better in the water and then just uh, flick him in underneath snags. So that's soft plastics covered. Now in terms of top water, um, really there's only about three or four different ones apart from the frogs that I, that I use. Um, MMD splash prawns, they've been catching lots of jacks at the moment. I don't mind them, they're okay. Uh, but some of the other ones that are slightly bigger profile, now don't be scared to throw a bigger lure at a jack. A 30 centimeter jack will easily eat a big lure like these. These are about 110 mil. Uh, and this is the skittish dog from Zurich. Probably my favorite topwater lure that I've ever used for jacks, barra, that sort of thing. Jacks love those bright reds and pinks. So these guys walk the dog style nice and loud with a really good rattle in them. Walk the dog nice and easy, get it in the snag, walk it, pause it, walk it, pause it. Jacks love them. Uh, this is also very similar to Realist Pencil, a 110WT. They are also exceptionally good and they've got some really good hooks that go with them as well. Great product from Duo. And then to go even bigger again, that's the 120 uh, Fang Pop from Duo. Realist Fang Pop. These are a tough lure, very, very strong. Uh, lasts a long time. I love this bright head, gold flank there and the pink body. And the jacks love them as well again. Just a soft bloop, 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 pause. Bloop, bloop, bloop and uh, the jacks love a bit of weight in them too, so much easier to cast. So there's those four. Moving right along, 
I'll start off with this guy here. Again, it's a Duo Realist Jerkbait 120F. So if you're getting a surface bite and it starts to go a little bit quiet, throwing one of these guys in really works well because they're a floating lure, so you can get it in close to the snag, whip it down, get it working down, and then it'll slowly float back to the top. And then when you whip it again on the surface, it just flicks a little bit of water really turns them on and uh, they're just a great lure. Again, you can cast them a mile as well. So there's that one. Uh, these two are exactly the same. I'll show you this guy, I love this color. It's a Realist Jerkbait 100DR. Now it's obviously a deep diver. So again, this guy will get you down along that rock wall or against that snag very, very quickly. Now, rods and reels, uh, mainly throwing uh, bait casters uh, with all these lures. And the one I've got here is a blades and tail. It's only a 5.9. It's just nice and easy to, to get lures in. It's a 10 to 20 pound. You don't need any heavier than that. Uh, I think that's more than enough. Now these fish do pull exceptionally hard when you first hook them. And this rod has so much power in this area here to pull them up, it's not an issue. We've got an ATC Combat version two. Now, in terms of braid, I normally only uh, fish 20 pound. This one happens to have 30 pound braid on it. And look, I think to break 20 pound braid through your rod, you know, it's a bit of bad luck. So I think 20 pounds enough. Most importantly though, is the leader. Now it depends where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing pontoons, um, jetties, uh, anything like that, where there's a lot of barnacles, a lot of snags that they can get you, bust you off real, real quick, um, minimum's 30 pound. I know guys that are fishing 60 and still getting done. But it, for me, maximum's 30. Uh, and for the most part, I actually only fish 20 pound. And a lot of guys are thinking, 20 pound for jacks. It just depends where you fish. Our rock walls, I've got a bit of a snag there, but once you get him off the wall, you're, you're pretty right. So 20 to 30 pound leader is how I fish. And it, it does all right, it does all right. Except when you lose one and you think, ah, what am I doing? But I think when you're fishing with these deep diving lures, uh, I think you get more bites on a lighter, on a lighter leader, so that's why I do it. So that's my very simple setup. This all fits in a small tackle bag, and I just leave it, that's my jack setup. And uh, I've caught lots and lots of them over the years, and I hope to continue. I've never broken 50 centimeters. Can't I've caught literally hundreds and never, my daughter has, but I haven't. Um, but anyway, join us now as we hit the water and start putting all this gear into practice, and see if we can uh, catch a few jacks for you guys. So the whole idea when you're using a frog like this, this McCarthy, these actually sink, but that's okay because I have my rod tip up and I just start swimming it out and it hits the surface and then it just looks like a little frog swimming. But the great thing about these frogs is you can skip them with a bit of practice underneath the trees, a bit like this. So you're sort of bouncing them, bouncing them in like that. And on a really good cast, you get them right up the back and that's where these Jacks will sit right up the back in virtually no water where it's nice and dark, they feel protected. Oh, here we go, something busting up just here. And then all I'm doing, just flick, flick, flick. It looks like a frog, a little frog swimming, get those legs going. The wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue in is done, we'll take our leave and go. Now there's one thing about chasing jacks, is more often than not, it doesn't happen the first time you go out. You've got to, you've got to work hard for them. It's as simple as that. So again, waiting for the tide to change. I'm just going to throw a couple of hard bodies around and see if I can find a decent sized flatty while we wait for that tide to really slow down. We've got probably an hour or so, but I always like to be out on the water just in case, just a little bit earlier. There's sometimes uh, willy weather and all the rest of them get it wrong and the tide's not quite what you think it's going to be. So. Oh, there's one. Yeah, just a little guy. Very effective way 
filling in the time while you wait for the jacks. Just come along these flats as the tide's running out. Flicking a shallow diving, hard body, twitch, twitch, pause. I always hit it on the pause. That's a legal size fish. Yeah, you can see all that is bait along that wall. Absolutely stack with it. I've come into this corner here and there's a big back eddy. So sometimes they'll bite before the bottom of the tide. So just throwing a few frogs around. I've just sort of customised them a little bit. A lot of these, uh, my mate went out the other day and he got, I think, six or seven strikes and they didn't land one fish. So what I've done is I've got this frog and I've sort of just customised it a little bit in that I've just added a little treble underneath. It can, it can affect the swimming action just a little bit. So it turns it on its side in the current. When the current slows down, I'll rear cave. It's just a, just a bead, a little treble, another bead. I've got a bead on top as well because I actually don't want not a lot of snags to deal with here when you're skipping underneath. And I don't want that top hook to be too far into the plastic. So it's unusual looking, but um, don't hurt to don't, doesn't hurt to customise. Give it a go. Uh, it's, it's only a small treble. It's more like a little assist hook, really, um, to assist that bigger hook. But he missed six or seven fish fishing weedless. And well, that sucks. So we're sitting here waiting for this tide to really slow down. And there's a little snag right there in front of us. We're just chucking lures for flathead. And a jack is just smash bait right on that twig. His whole back has come out of the water. That was crazy. So it might be uh, almost time. We start thinking about casting for jacks. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. Again, kamikaze cast. Why he wouldn't eat that then? Right through. Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah, good, good, Jack. He's followed it all the way out. Mm, yep, got him. Got him out. Very shallow water here. Yeah, nice, Jack. Stay connected, stay connected. Hang on a oh, it's got him on the treble. Yes. <sighs> that was sick. sense of relief right now is massive. In, in my career, I, I'm lucky enough, I can say that I've probably caught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jacks, but most of those are up in the Northern Territory, far north Queensland. But to get a, a beautiful jack like that in my home river, and this may be a PB for me. This may be a PB, all right. I've never caught one over 50 centimetres. My daughter has, I never have. Just gonna get some bogus. Yeah, my, board, my daughter did it on her first fish ever. Got a 52, the little monkey. But anyway, get the bogus. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. One take, baby. Yes. Oh, that was sick. On top water too. What a beautiful fish, look at him. So he's got both the assist hook, I believe, and hold oh, still, buddy. He's got the assist hook, and he's got the main hook in him. I think, I think, oh, nearly. I'm pretty sure the assist hook is the one that's pinned him in the roof of his mouth. Yep, got it out. Yep, little assist hook did it. fish. Now I've got a measuring mat on the floor of this boat. It's not gonna make 50. Let's see what we got. 50, oh mate that's 51. 51. 
PB baby on my home river. Oh, that's so cool. All right. It could be 52, but we'll say 51, because that's two centimeters over my PB. What a magic fish. So happy. Oh my gosh, he is beautiful. We're not even at the right time of the tide yet, so it could be on this afternoon, but even if I don't see another one, that is really cool. Happy days. You just gotta swim in for a second. One thing that I see sometimes on social media is guys will go to a stump or a tree or whatever it might be and they'll, oh, I've got five jacks, I've took them all home for a feed. You do realize that's it. Jacks don't keep going back there to that spot all the time unless they live there. Guys have released them literally miles away and they'll go back to their own tree. That's one family of jacks and this fish here could be 30 years old. So only take home what you can feed. You don't need to take four or five of them or even three or four, like maybe take home one. Have a meal, let them live, man. They're magnificent fish. All right, buddy, you ready to go? Yeah, he's biting down. I just don't want to let him go. I want to hang out with him. You're cool. All right, open those bogus, and away he goes. Oh. One of the most satisfying feelings when you've got a target species you do your research, you really think about what you're doing and you put the time in on the water and it comes off. And that's why I love fishing and I know that's why so many guys out there love it just as much as I do. Mangrove jacks, they're challenging, but they're also very, very rewarding. Hey everybody, um, please uh, hit subscribe down the bottom. Hope you enjoyed the video, uh, hit subscribe and and the notification little bell there so every time we get uh, a video uploaded you'll, you'll know about it it'll put up all the short versions of our show and um, it's gonna be heaps of cool content plus heaps of how-to videos uh, that will hopefully help you guys out in your fishing endeavors so um, yeah Strong.